Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Mike McHugh, and today we're going to be talking about vocal processing. And just a few things before we get into it. Today I'm using Reason to process my tracks, but these concepts will apply to any DAW that you happen to use. So feel free to take these concepts and apply them to your own vocal mixes. But since I am using Reason, I'm using almost all stock Reason devices, and I've gone ahead and created a combinator patch of these insert effects, uh, which will be available for download in the description below. So feel free to use those as a starting point and as a guideline. And that's an important thing to note is that these ideas and concepts are only guidelines and suggestions. It is important to remember that no vocalist is the same, no track is the same, no producer is the same, and no style is the same. So you will have to adapt these settings um, to your particular situation. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is a track that I've been working on called Speed Up for my side project called Quesadilla Armadillo. And what I've done to start is I've bypassed the insert effects and the send effects, and we only have the raw vocals with only a little bit of pitch correction on them. So this is what that sounds like. Wake me when we're there I don't really care How long we're in the air As long As I have you So the first thing to note is that you do want to make sure that your vocals are recorded properly uh, with minimal noise, no clipping, uh, proper gain staging. Um, without those things, there is not a lot that you can do. There are things, um, but that goes more into audio repair rather than processing. So um, it's a bit of a separate topic. So make sure that you start with that. Like I said, I have a little bit of pitch correction on these, and um, now I can go into what they sound like after processing. So if I go ahead and unbypass everything, this is what they sound like processed. Wake me when we're there. I don't really care how long we're in the air. As long as I have you. So the first thing to note is that I do have two main vocal tracks. There is a third, but it's not playing in this section, um, which is a, a vocal chop sampler that I created. But mainly I have vocals low and vocals high, which are the same melody, just an octave apart. These three vocal tracks are being sent to a vocal bus, which you can find down here. So those three tracks to the bus, which is being sent to the master section, and that becomes important later. But for the actual processing on these two tracks, it's fairly similar um, because it's the same singer for each track. So the EQ is going to be um, basically the same, just a few minor tweaks. So I've started with an equalizer. Um, you'll notice that I have the low cut enabled at 30 hertz, which is the only option on this particular EQ. In a lot of cases, I would go higher, but uh, again, there's no way to change that on this one. I've also done two cuts, one at around 250 hertz and one at around 2.87 kilohertz. Um, the 250 hertz is very muddy in my voice, and then this um, 2.87 kilohertz is very harsh. So. You'll also notice the Q, I've done a bit of a higher Q or a more narrow cut in the low frequency and a bit of a um, lesser Q or a wider cut in the high frequency. I've also done a small boost um, at 6K to add a little bit of air um, to this vocal. So generally you want to subtract the bad things out of the raw track with minimal additive EQ. Um, you can actually do uh, EQ after compression as well, which I'll talk about in just a second. But after this EQ, I have it sent to two compressors. 
Um, the first one is doing a little bit more work with a lower threshold and a higher ratio being sent to the second one, which is a lower, uh, excuse me, higher threshold with a lower ratio. I like to separate out my compressors for vocals because I find that it sounds more natural. Um, but you can experiment with that as well. Now, like I said, you can also have an EQ after, um, even instead of this. Uh, it's totally up to you. The idea behind that is that if there are frequencies in the raw track that are hitting your compressor in a negative, in a way that is not musical or you don't like, then you want to subtract those frequencies out before they get to the compressor and then EQ more additive EQ after these compressors. So in this case, um, I was happy with how it sounded um, just by subtracting those um, unpleasant frequencies out beforehand and doing that small boost. And I thought that sounded nice, but I could do, if I liked how the raw track was hitting the compressor, I might do an EQ afterwards, um, or I could do both, totally up to you. After that, I have it being sent to a tape saturation, uh, lightly mixed in to add a little more weight um, to the tracks. And that is really it for the insert effects. Now, like I mentioned, I have everything bussed to a vocal bus, which is being uh, sent to the master section. And what I've done um, with that is a little bit of parallel processing using um, the master send effects. So I have up here a delay, which is Sound Toys Echo Boy, but you can use any delay that works for you. And then reverb. And I'm going to switch to the back of the rack, and this looks a little convoluted, but uh, just bear with me here. So like I said, this vocal bus is being sent to the master section, but I also have parallel out going to a spider. Now, keep that in mind as I explain the rest of this. So the Echo Boy and the Reverb are the two send effects. So I have send effect uh, one, so out into audio in of the, of the delay, the audio out of the delay going into the first compressor, and then the audio out of that compressor going back to the effects return. Same thing for the second one. I have the, audio, uh, the send going to into the vocal reverb, the out of the reverb going into the compressor, and then the out going to the return of the effects send. Um, now, the important thing is that, like I said, I have the parallel out of the bus going into the spider, and that is being split into each of these side chains. And what that does is actually duck these effects. It compresses the delay and the reverb signal whenever this vocal bus has signal going through it and that really helps clean it up in a lot of cases and um, still add ambience and effect um, without making it muddy so these effects are dialed in specifically for this song but um, that's just a really good way to add that ambience without muddying up your mix so that is basically it. I can go ahead and play you um, the track um, fully in so that you can get an idea of what it sounds like. But first, let me show you quickly um, this mixer. Here's the vocal high and the vocal low, and you can see that I have the two sends enabled uh, with various levels. And these can also be mixed. Um, the send levels can be mixed separately which is gives just a much greater control over each of these effects so this is what the track sounds like in this section um fully processed So I hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, put them below and please like and subscribe and also let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks. I'll talk to you guys later.